Paddy, we're here at Tarasol's Derby Sale. You're over to try and buy a couple of nice horses and winners, future winners, hopefully, for some clients. Um, how are you finding this new role after retiring back in April? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's obviously totally different and um, something I didn't have time to do when I was obviously riding. But I enjoy it. It's meeting some great people, seeing some amazing horses. They all look unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, look, it's, it's the start of a new venture and one I'm really looking forward to. You now have a business called Cotswold Bloodstock. Tell us a little bit about this and, and what the future holds for that. Yeah, like, to become a bloodstock agent, obviously, you know, you're, you're thinking of names. We probably use Paddy Brennan's name enough, but I'm, I'm involved with a man called Nick Burriton. I must pronounce his surname correctly. And um, he, he's been very good to me. I used to ride a lot of horse from as a jockey. And we sort of came up with the idea that we'd maybe go into business together. And we were trying to come up with a name. And then my wife actually mentioned it. We live in the Cotswolds and we thought it sounded good. And when we went to research it for where you got to secure the name, it happened to be available. It was actually used back in 1978. So someone had it before, but luckily it was it was available again. And we're very happy with the name and we're really excited about what we, what, what we can do in the future. Keeping it simple, eh? Trying to. Um, looking back at Goff's Arkle sale a couple of weeks ago, um, you had one of the high lots you bought, uh, lot 142, it's done a getaway, uh, it cost 105000 so plenty of money spent there. Yeah, we sort of, we had a chat, me and Fergal, and he's a horse I've been trying to buy for a while. Uh, genuinely, I was that certain I was going to win the entry bum bumper on a horse called Tripoli Flyer. I was trying to buy him weeks and months before, and then four days before I rode him work, I rang... Um, Callahan's again and we tried to come up with a figure and didn't quite meet them and I went on and just got beaten the entry bumper it's a race for me that got away I was just too keen and got to the front running away and just got nabbed the last hundred yards horse pulled up in front but yeah I believed in the family his other brother was the only horse to beat Constitution Hill in the pint of pint and he harm and asking so that it needed no introduction and he's a model he's a beautiful horse we've got him back he's at Jason Maguire's in Ivy Lodge and he loves him so fingers crossed exciting future ahead and here obviously today and tomorrow you hope to pick up a couple yeah I had a go at lot 82 today I had that a was that was a getaway filly with a really nice pedigree um, I had a go I had a figure and I, I have a habit of going a bit stronger than that but anyway we gave it a good go we went to 58 med 60 so well done to the new connections and we'll try again later today or maybe or tomorrow looking back on the career um, you had an unbelievable career you, you rode over 1500 winners 18 grade one winners i suppose the, well I, I can't speak for you but i imagine you're going to tell me the best day of your career was imperial commander winning the the 2010 Cheltenham Gold Cup, but Q Cards a horse who obviously you had an unbelievable association with. You rode him 14 times, he won five times on him, all five being grade ones. Yeah, what a horse. Mm. You know, he was sold here. Um, I was so lucky, and um, having time to reflect on my career, I sort of realised what I did now was quite nice and something I'm really proud of. When you're a jockey, you don't have time to reflect, and yeah, I think. The one word I am, um, when I look back now, is proud. It was, it was some journey. It was 27 years of a lot of hard work, a lot of disappointment. But once that last day came, it was a sense of relief. Body was in great shape. Yeah, and I knew the end was coming. And every time I walked into the weigh room, I was scared what it was going to feel like. But as I say, that last race, it felt like the longest race I ever rode in. And when I was sort of turning in, I thought this is, this could be it. You know, this is happening. Mm -hmm. So. I was mental, I was so pleased. Nice to finish on a winner as well, of course, and in Cheltenham. Yeah, I couldn't have had a more perfect ending, honestly. Uh, I was so lucky. Obviously, I'd planned maybe if I had a festival winner, and a lot of things went wrong. But I kept saying, when am I ever going to get a day again where everything comes right? And my last day, everything came right. My family was there, my kids were out of school, and the man above was looking down, which he always does, and gave me the best send-off I could ever have asked for. Um, Q card, the one race that always stands out for me with him is uh, the King George, um, yourself and Ruby Walsh, him riding for tour. That was some race, wasn't it? Yeah, I still get goosebumps thinking about that now. Um, what a race, what a race. And the crowd went mental that day. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they were shouting for Vator or Q card. It was crazy scenes. And yeah, look, it took a lot of disappointment when I had the mishap in the Gold Cup. but. There's one wild one. Hmm. 
I felt um, I felt like I had to to win that day in, in, in the King George was extremely special and maybe that's from something I need to look back with a lot of positives that I made the million pound bonus yeah, obviously in line know. you know we won we won on the line and yeah I got to try and mentally look back more on the positives of that day than the negatives of the Gold Cup but there you go you want a horse do you miss the riding no, I don't really. No, no, I really. You, you finished as as you wanted to finish. Yeah, really. I did honestly. Yes. There's a race coming up um, in Doncaster. That's maybe the legends. I yes, said I, I, I did. I did say I wouldn't ride again, but that's different. Though, Graham Lee, my name might be involved somewhere in it, so that's to be discussed. But that's maybe where we will turn up again. But David, don't actually miss the riding. Yeah. My body was struggling, and I felt towards the end, Fergal's head. Joanne, the travelling head girl, she sometimes had to lead me a long way across the chute and it wasn't balanced but yeah, I was, tactics wise I felt I was still at the best but physically, physically. struggling okay. and maybe I didn't have another fall left in me. Uh, you've had some great associations with so many good trainers in the UK over the years but that association with Fergal towards the end obviously just it just looked like these were two good mates enjoying what you were doing together from the outside looking at Yeah in. look it did give me it gave me a new challenge, you know, you're starting from the very bottom and I suppose that really extended my career because I gave it 100% for so long, it was more, it became more personal with his staff, with himself, a lot of loyal owners, I mean, yeah, so it, that was brilliant, you know, I started with 10 horses, maybe 12 and he walked up to 150 or whatever it was, but yeah, it's good and obviously we're still associated with each other and hopefully in this bloodstock and setting up Paddy Brennan Racing, Racing, Racing Syndicate, there'll be lots more winners together in the future. Good, well listen, good to see you in, in good form, looking well after uh, retiring, and uh, very best of luck with the new venture in Cotswold Bloodstock. Really appreciate it, thanks for your time. Thanks.